Hello, everybody. Happy Sunday afternoon. Hope yours is going well. We've got another Seahawks video to get to today, but first we just hit 3,570 subscribers to the channel. Big jump in the last few days because of the draft. I want to give a shout out to all the subscribers. And of course, special tip of the cap goes to the channel members, especially elite channel members Brandon McKell, Hasher for MVP, VGK Tiger 75, Rye Guy, Salacious Crumb, Brendan Nelson's Haircut, TVO, It's Hoof, The Reno, Austin Roberts, 12th Man, Scott Todd. And we have a new batch of members that I want to give a special shout out to. We picked them up during the draft. We have. Let me get this right here. New Elite Channel members, Aaron Garrett and Arfman23. And new Basic Channel members, Mr. Kane, Kirill978, GoHawks2021, and Ryan Cutshaw. So, welcome to the team. We picked up quite a few members in the past few days. By the way, we are now two members short of 40, which would give us another emoji. All right. The draft is over. Most of UDFA is over. There's still the possibility of picking up a few new players. But I think the impactful stuff is probably done. Most of the prospects that I was really interested in in UDFA, most of the guys who I thought had a real chance to make the roster, are gone. Uh, Dylan Moses went to Jacksonville. Uh, Jamie Newman went to Philadelphia. Puka Williams went to Cincinnati. So... The guys who are left are guys who have little to no chance to actually make a 53-man roster or a practice squad. So now that the dust has cleared on all that, I want to go ahead and take a look at the state of the roster. And I do mean the full roster. Today we are going to be taking a look at the full 90-man roster as I see it coming together at this moment. So that's 53 active roster spots. That is 12 practice squad spots, and then you have 25 spots for basically roster fodder. And I'll tell you guys how I see it breaking down right now, and in several months we'll see how close I was to the truth. So, 90-man roster, let's go. All right, hopefully you guys can read that. Go ahead and enlarge it on your screen if you need to, but you should be able to uh, make out the full... As of right now, I have an 83-man roster, because I don't know who the last seven spots are going to, but as near as I can tell, we have seven roster spots just completely open right now. Probably none of them available in the 53-man or the practice squad, but here's how I see things right now. So, basically, here's the color coding. The green players are making the 53-man 95%. If you're green, you're making the 53-man roster unless you disaster strikes. I can't even imagine what it would take to get one of the green guys off the 53-man. Yellow means you are probably making the 53-man, but I can easily imagine you either going to the practice squad or getting pushed off the team entirely. A trade or just a cut. So we have five of those guys. So if you're looking for a way to make room on the roster for that one player you really like, the yellow guys are the guys who are most likely going to be pushed off. Or if you want to swap a practice squad player in, those are the guys you can push off. Cyan, or light blue. These are the practice squad spots. We have 12 of them. Currently, I have all 12 filled. This is how I see it filling out as of right now. Orange means you might make the practice squad. You have a decent chance, a uh, puncher's chance, as they say, of making the practice squad, or maybe even the 53-man, but that's really unlikely. However, you are probably just not going to make the team. And the red players are the players who I think have no path forward to make the practice squad or 53-man. They're just preseason and training camp fodder. You have to have guys like that around for training camp to compete, but I say if you're in red, you have about a 10%, maybe even 5% chance of making the team or less, and that's about it. So we'll see how things shake out, but this is my best guess as of this moment. So in this area right here, I have 53 roster spots filled out of 53, so we are full up on active roster players. We are full up on practice squad players. This is 12, and then we have 18 spots filled in the roster fodder section. And that means we have seven more. And what you could see is signing a veteran like a Richard Sherman or a K.J. Wright or a Bashad Breeland or a, a Casey Hayward. 
and then you might see one of the yellow players get knocked down to the practice squad. One of the practice squad players becomes roster fodder. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. So that's basically how I'm going to keep track of things as we go forward. We may sign a couple more UDFAs, and I will go ahead and mark it here. But here's the 53-man. So, or excuse me, well, the 90-man, as it were. So let's go ahead and go through it real quick just to kind of summarize everything. Uh, quarterback, we obviously have Russell Wilson and Geno Smith. I don't see any way that Russell and Geno aren't the uh, two active roster QBs when the season starts. And then you have uh, Alex Magoo on the practice squad. I think his spot on the practice squad is fairly secure. And then Danny Etling is just fodder. Okay, running back, we have Chris Carson, Rashad Penny, and Alex Collins can feel pretty secure about their roster spots right now. Maybe Penny's in a little bit of jeopardy, but I'm not convinced right now. Uh, Travis Homer is on the roster for the moment, but he's on thin ice. I think he's going to fit in pretty well in the Shane Waldron offense, but that doesn't matter if he's just bad. So don't be shocked if he ends up swapping out with DJ Dallas or running back X. Speaking of DJ Dallas, he's the running back on the practice squad. And then I have the two uh, UDFA signings, Emmons and Johnson, as roster folder. Fullback, we only have one on the 90-man, Nick Ballore. I'm sure he's going to make the team, but that's about all he's going to do. I don't think he's going to play on offense. Wide receiver, and this one's actually the first tricky one for me. Uh, obviously, DK Metcalf is the number one. Lockett's the number two. Eskridge is the number three. If he's not, that would be a pretty big disappointment. Freddie Swain is the number four. And then we have Tamori and Terry at five. I think Tamori and Terry makes the 53-man, but because he is a rookie and a somewhat raw rookie who didn't play that well last year, don't be shocked if he starts on the PS. We can protect him and make sure no other team can poach him. So don't be shocked if he ends up on the practice squad to start his career and maybe works his way onto the roster later. Uh, on the practice squad, I have Kay Johnson. He's a guy that we probably will protect on the practice squad because I really like him. But for the moment, assuming full health, I don't think he has a lot he can do on this team right now. We have a lot of guys who are good in the slot, Lockett and Eskridge. So Kay Johnson, if he made the roster, would probably just be filling space so he can start on the practice squad. And then I have Penny Hart making the practice squad. Don't be surprised if he takes Terry's spot just because he's a good pra uh, special teamer. But as a receiver, yeah, Terry clearly has higher upside, so I have him there. And then Aaron Fuller hanging on for dear life on the practice squad. He could easily lose his spot to someone else, by the way. Don't be shocked if that happens. And then we have uh, Weddington, the Stanford re receiver. I don't think he has a path forward. Ursua, I think the party's over with Ursua. I don't expect him to make the team. And Cody Thompson as well. We're basically just cleansing out the roster fodder receivers who never got on the field. The only one who I think has a real chance of clinging on is Fuller. And that's just because I think his skill set is something that might remind us of Doug Baldwin. And that might be enough to keep him around. I also think Penny Hart will stick around just because he's good on special teams. But uh, that's what I see for receiver. That's really the first hard one to calculate. All right, moving on. Tight end. Gerald Everett starting, obviously. Will Disley backing up, obviously. Uh, Colby Parkinson is the third string. That's a pretty easy one as well. I don't have any practice squad tight end. It would not amaze me if Colby starts on the practice squad and we call up another receiver or cornerback instead. But I kind of want three tight ends on the ro active roster. So no practice squatter. And then roster fodder is Tyler Mabry, who's still hanging around from last year. I don't think he's going to hang around this year. Uh, we just have other areas of the roster that we need to take care of. All right, now we get to the offensive line. Let's start with left tackle. Keep in mind that the exact positions of some of these guys is easily interchangeable. Uh, left tackles can play right tackle. Left guards can play right guard. Guards can usually play center. Centers can usually play guard. It's not ever going to be perfect, but you can shift people around pretty easily, if only to have depth at that spot nominally. So left tackle, we have Dwayne Brown, and I do have Stone Forsyth on the roster for the moment. I do think he'll make the 53-man, but kind of like Terry, don't be shocked if he starts out on the practice squad just for a lack of experience and because we don't want him to get on the field immediately. So if Stone Forsyth starts on the practice squad, we might shift some pieces around here to um, create the adequate tackle depth. So Stone Forsyth is the backup left tackle for now. I have Island, one of the UDFAs we picked up making the roster as a practice squatter. I like him. I'm excited about him. 
Uh, I know he's more of a guard than a tackle, so that might end up being somebody we push down to guard, but for now I have him as our practice squad tackle. And then Jake Curhan, another UDFA we picked up. I give him an outside chance of making the roster, or the practice squad roster, over Island, but as of right now, if I had to guess, I would say Island makes the roster for his flexibility. Okay, left guard, only two. We have Damian Lewis and Jordan Simmons. Um, I don't think that we're going to see anybody on the practice squad or, uh, roster fodder at left guard. Obviously we have some guys who could play left guard in a pinch. Uh, one interesting thing here to note though, is that Damian Lewis at per Pete Carroll yesterday is moving to left guard, which is going to be an experiment that we're going to need some time to, uh, figure out. So if it doesn't work, expect him to move back to right guard and Damian Lewis I'm sorry, Gabe Jackson to go to left guard and Damian Lewis to go back to right guard. So keep an eye on that as the season starts or maybe even in the preseason. Uh, center, we have Ethan Posick starting, Philip Haynes backing him up. I moved Haynes from guard to center because I think that's where the need is and I think that's where we need some extra depth. And Phil Haynes has practiced as a center for us in the past. So seems like we feel like he can do it. I have uh, Lestage, the uh, Canadian UDFA we picked up on the practice squad. Don't be surprised if he makes a splash on the 53-man. Don't be surprised if Lestage ends up as the backup center behind Posick because it seems like he's a more natural center. And from what I've heard, I'm going to talk more about this later, but he seems like a credible center prospect. And then we have Kyle Fuller on the outside looking in, but he has a decent chance to make the team just because he has experience with the team. And then we have Brad Lundblade, who I don't think has a path forward on the active roster or practice squad. All right, right side of the offensive line is up next. We have Gabe Jackson starting at right guard per Pete Carroll yesterday. Jamarco Jones moves to guard to back up Gabe Jackson because I think guard is his best spot. Clearly, he just hasn't been cutting it as a tackle, but as a guard, he's played pretty well. And then I have Hawker on the practice squad. He was one of the key UDFAs we picked up yesterday, Jared Hawker. I think he's going to make the PS, and I hope he can stick on the PS because I kind of like his potential. And no roster fodder here. Uh, right tackle, we still have Brandon Shell starting, Cedric, Cedric Obwehi backing him up, same as last year, and then Tommy Champion has an outside chance of making the practice squad, but I think he's probably not going to make it. Uh, he was on the team last year, so I give him a chance, but probably not. So that's your offense, and now let's check on the defense. Uh, Leo, we are four deep at Leo. I, I kind of feel like we need to move somebody, but I don't know who it could be. So don't be surprised if like Mayo moves to linebacker or something, or Taylor could still move to linebacker, I guess. But um, as of right now, Dunlap, Alton Robinson, Daryl Taylor, and Benson Mayo. Nobody on the practice squad at Leo and nobody on the roster fodder list either. I think we're just going to be good there. And one tech, we have Al Woods and Ben, uh, excuse me, Brian Monet. Uh, I don't see anybody on the practice squad at one tech, and Miles Adams is probably not making the team this year because we refreshed with new practice squatters. Three tech. This is a little interesting for me. I kind of like what we're doing in three tech. We got Puna Ford and LJ Collier backing them up. I think that's pretty simple right now. That's pretty academic. Practice squad, however, we have Robert Kemdichi. And assuming he can stick on the practice squad, assuming he doesn't get butthurt that he didn't make the roster and run home, I really like having him on the practice squad. I wouldn't be shocked if he gets the call up a few times next year. And then we have Cedric Lattimore and Hewitt, the UDFA we just picked up on the outside. So that's the three tech. Finally, five tech, Kerry Hyder, Alden Smith backing him up for now. Don't be surprised if he gets kicked off and somebody else comes on. And then Rasheem Green, third string, five tech, and then no practice squatters and no uh, roster fodder right now. Okay. So that's the defensive line. Linebacker, we kind of need to inject at least one more player in here, I think. It might be somebody already on the team who moves, but we have four linebackers right now, and it's pretty academic how they all slot in. Bobby Wagner is the starting middle linebacker with Ben Burkirvin behind him. Jordan Brooks is the starting will with UDFA John Radigan as the practice squad will. If his Army deployment stuff allows him to actually be in the NFL this year, which remains to be seen, we'll just have to wait and see on that. Uh, Sam is Cody Barton. Uh, as of right now, the Seahawks seem interested in letting him be the Sam, and then we have nobody behind him on the practice squad or the roster fodder list. Okay, cornerback, and this one's going to be a little tricky, 
because we have a lot of interesting cornerbacks on this roster right now, and there isn't going to be enough room for everybody. So right now I have three guys who have a solid roster spot, DJ Reed, Akello Witherspoon, and Trey Brown. All three of those guys are 95% or more likely to make the 53-man. Uh, we have Trey Flowers and Demarius Randall on the roster for the moment, but don't be surprised if one of those guys gets booted, either to the practice squad or off the team altogether. Neither of those guys look to me like they have a secure roster spot. They're going to have to fight for it. So Trey Flowers and Demarius Randall could easily be cleared out for a veteran or one of the young guys that we like. Uh, as for who those young guys who we like could be, I have uh, Miller, the um, Brian, I'm sorry, it's not Miller, it's Brian Mills, the cornerback we picked up in UDFA who we like. Um, I could see Brian Mills making the practice squad. I could see him making the active roster as well. Don't be surprised if he challenges Flowers and Randall. And then we have Jackson Stanley also in the practice squad. He was somebody who actually played for us a little last year. And then with a good chance of making the roster, but it being less than 50%, I have Pierre Desir. I don't think there's room for him right now. And then Jordan Miller and Gavin Heslop are probably just gone. Nickel cornerback. Let's talk about Nickel real quick. We have Ugo Amati with Marquise Blair backing him up. Marquise Blair is probably going to back up at like every secondary spot, honestly. But for now, I'm going to list him as a backup Nickel. But Ugo Amati starting and no practice squad Nickel corners. And uh, Lyndon Stevens, I give him an outside chance of making the roster or the practice squad, but I think it's unlikely so, yeah, I think he ends up off the off the team altogether. Safety, strong safety, we have Jamal Adams with Ryan Neal backing him up. Uh, free safety, we have Quandre Diggs and nobody else behind him. And then, of course, special teamers, we have Myers, Dixon, and Ott. And that gives us the 53-man roster, the 12-man practice squad, and 18 of 25 roster fodder spots filled. So, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you for watching. Peace out, go Hawks. Let me know what you think in the comments. Who do you see not making the 53-man who I currently have there? Who do you see maybe getting pushed off the practice squad? What about the roster fodder? Do any of these guys make the team? Do you think we sign any veterans and push any of these yellow guys off the team? Let me know what you think in the comments. Peace out, go Hawks, and see you guys later today.